is the Chemistry 121 Lab Safety video for determination of percent oxygen in potassium chlorate. The percentage composition of a compound is the percentage by mass of each element in that compound. In this lab, you will be experimentally determining the percentage of oxygen in potassium chlorate by decomposition. When potassium chlorate is heated to a high temperature, oxygen gas and potassium chloride are produced. Through the process of heating, cooling, and measuring the mass, you will be able to determine what percentage of the entire compound of potassium chlorate is oxygen. In this lab, you will be using chemicals, so safety goggles should be worn at all times. Potassium chlorate and potassium chloride will not harm your skin, but the silver nitrate used at the end of this lab will stain your skin for a few days. I'm first going to show you how to use a Bunsen burner. This is a Bunsen burner. It has a long barrel, and at the top of it, the Bunsen burner flame will come out. There's also a hose which connects to a gas valve and handle, and a knob at the bottom that allows me to control how much gas is entering the Bunsen burner. Before I light my Bunsen burner, I'm going to put on my safety goggles. You'll be lighting a Bunsen burner using a striker. If you pull hard on the striker, sparks are produced, which will allow you to light the Bunsen burner flame. To begin lighting your Bunsen burner, first turn the handle from perpendicular to parallel. You'll then hear gas coming out of the Bunsen burner, and when you're ready, you can put the striker next to the Bunsen burner and pull on it. A Bunsen burner flame will be produced from the spark. This one is about 8 inches high. I think it's a little tall. To lower the flame, I can turn this knob on the bottom, or I can close the handle of the gas valve. The flame is now about four inches tall, which is a better height for my experiment. In this experiment, you'll be using a ring stand to hold your sample in place. On the ring stand, you'll need to put a support ring. These can be found on the, at the front of the classroom. And the support ring will hold uh, the clay triangle, which can be found in your box. The clay triangle is just the right size to hold the crucible and the lid. After you add approximately 1.5 grams of potassium chloride to the crucible, carefully place the crucible and its lid on the clay triangle. You're going to begin by gently heating the potassium chloride in the crucible for 8 minutes. To gently heat, the crucible should be 6 to 8 centimeters above the inner cone of the Bunsen burner flame. I'm going to light my Bunsen burner. Turn on the gas. Use my striker to light the Bunsen burner. I can tell right now the Bunsen burner flame is going to be a little too high, so I'm going to lower it down by closing the handle of the gas. I now have six to eight centimeters distance between the bottom of the crucible and the Bunsen burner flame. If I'd like, I can measure that distance using a ruler. After heating gently for eight minutes, I'm then going to either carefully lower the crucible down or increase the height of the Bunsen burner until the inner blue cone is touching the bottom of the crucible. I'm going to choose to increase the flame height by opening up the gas more. I'm then going to heat strongly for 10 more minutes, which will allow the oxygen to leave the potassium chloride. At the end of 10 minutes, I'll, lay, I'll turn my Bunsen burner off. I'll then allow the crucible to cool, measure and record the mass in my data table. After measuring the mass the first time, Heat the crucible strongly for an additional six minutes. Allow it to cool and measure and record the mass in your data table. Repeat the process of heating, cooling, and weighing until the mass is constant, with a difference of less than 0.05 grams between weighings. Once you've removed all the oxygen from your sample, it is time to determine the identity of the residue left in the crucible. You will be comparing the chemical properties of potassium chlorate, potassium chloride, and the residue by dissolving the solids in deionized water and reacting the chemicals with silver nitrate. At the end of your experiment, all liquid and solid waste produced should be disposed of in a labeled waste container in the fume hood. Do not pour unknown chemicals or other chemicals down the drain. The only substance that can be poured down the drain is tap water or pure deionized water. Before you leave, clean, dry, and put all equipment back where you found it, whether it's a cart, your box, or a shelf. Wipe off your lab bench, and wash your hands. Remember that a safe lab is a happy lab.